Hi, I'm Blissero. Today, I'm just going to quickly demonstrate how to send DMX out of the OPZ to control lights with this, the Entech DMX USB Pro Mark II. I'll start just by kind of saying, well, what is an OPZ? The OPZ is a musical instrument that can sequence samples, synthesize our engines, as well as sending DMX, and you can also control Unity game engines and a few other things that are within the OPZ app. For those who maybe don't know, DMX is kind of like MIDI for lights. It's a standardized protocol, which means that all different brands kind of use the same language in much the same way that um, MIDI standardized musical instruments. So in order to get uh, the OPZ to send the DMX signal and kind of have everything all working, you will need a few things. You'll need the OPZ first and foremost. You'll need the Entech DMX USB Pro Mark II. Now, you can also use the Mark 1 version. Uh, Entech really kind of gave me the Mark 2 to use for this video, so I'll be using this. But just know that the actual setup for the Mark 2 and the Mark 1 is the same. Um, there's slight differences between the two, um, and I'll kind of discuss that in a wee bit. You'll also need this a Kingston Nucleum. Now, you can use other powered USB hubs. This is the only one that is supported by Teenage Engineering, and I will tell you that I've had quite a lot of trouble using other USB um, hubs, and I would kind of just recommend using this. Um, there are a couple of things that make it really useful. Um, it's powered externally, as you can kind of see with this little USB-C port here, which means that it can send the power to the NTEC box and also charge the OPZ at the same time and power any other sort of USB devices you have running. It has two USB ports and it connects directly to the OPZ with the USB-C port. Um, like I said, I've had problems with other ones. I know it's a bit of a pain if you maybe already have a USB hub, but I've used really good USB hubs that just haven't seemed to work with the OPZ. This is the only one that's supported, so I would recommend you use this. So, how do we connect all this? Well, it's nice and easy. First and foremost, you just plug the uh, Nucleum into the OPZ. You do need to give the USB hub external power. Um, so I'm just gonna plug the USB port in here. Um, and you then need to connect this to the USB hub. So there's a little USB cable that comes with the NTEC box. And like I said, this will work the exact same with the Mark 1. This is the only connection between the OPZ and the NTEC is through the USB hub. So essentially with a Mark 1 version, you're plugging out of a USB port into the USB input of the Mark uh, 1 version, exactly the same as you're using with the Mark 2. So I'll just go ahead and do that just now. Great, so now we have all three elements. We have the OPZ connected to the USB hub, a USB cable, and go into the NTAC. You'll notice when I turn the OPZ on that we get a little flashing light on the NTAC box, which kind of indicates that it's receiving DMX signal. This is the connection that you need. It's the exact same with the Mark 1 as it is with the Mark 2. This is the only connection to get everything all hooked up. Now, from here, we do need to use the breakout cable, which looks a little bit like this. Um, so this is the breakout cable um, and it gives you access to the DMX uh, standard sort of five pin connector, um, which then goes into the lights. The last thing you need is obviously lights. Um, I'm going to be using some Astera pixel tubes, um, which are kind of like wireless sort of lights. Um, and in order to do that, I just send the DMX signal to this box. But essentially, you could imagine this as being like a hardware connection to the uh, to the lights directly. Um, that's essentially where the connection sort of made. This just then sends that wirelessly. So ignore this. You don't need this unless you're using the Astera and you want to do it wirelessly. But these are the only lights I have, so that's why I'm using it. So now I'm just going to connect the breakout adapter to the NTEC box. And you just tighten these up here. And then you can see I've just got DMX1, for example, and I'm just going to connect my little breakout adapter, which looks a little bit like this. So this allows me to go into like a mini jack size DMX signal sender. And that is actually what the Astera box accepts. Um, you can see at the bottom there's a little DMX1 here. So I'm just going to plug that in. And you can see I've got the DMX light is green on the CRMX, which means the OPZ has successfully sent the signal through the NTEC box and into my uh, wireless transmitter. So this is essentially the DMX is now all working. 
So just before I show you how it all kind of works and plays together and how you kind of actually start sequencing on the OPZ, um, I'd briefly mention that there is um, a Mark II version and then there's also a Mark I version. Um, this one here is the Mark I version. Um, it basically, um, I'll kind of explain the differences between the two and why you might want one or the other. Um, in terms of the sort of connectors, you've got the five pin connector right on the body of the Mark I, so you don't need the breakout um, cable like this. Um, and then there's also the standard USB port there. Um, so, right, well, what are the differences? Um, really briefly, the Mark II has a lot more features. Um, now, these features aren't actually inherently going to be particularly useful specifically with the OPZ. Um, the OPZ is kind of almost like maxed out by what it can do with the Mark I. Um, however, there are a few things that might make the Mark II a little bit interesting for you. Um, the breakout cable, there is another one that has um, a MIDI connection so that it can receive MIDI signals, um, which kind of for me is appealing because I might want to kind of move away from using the OPZ and kind of try using something else, um, you know, other devices to kind of sequence the lights. So that's really cool. Um, the Mark II version has a slightly better processor, um, which apparently kind of can improve reliability, though to be honest, the Mark I's been perfect for me as well. Um, and it can also do like multiple universes of DMX and stuff. So it's much more powerful if you ever did want to scale up or move away from using the OPZ. In the specific context of the OPZ, the Mark I is perfectly fine, does exactly everything that you'd need it to do. Um, just a quick word on the Mark I. Um, in terms of external power from the USB, um, it's stated by Teenage Engineering that this one um, like does need external power and that this one doesn't. Um, so you can just go directly from the USB port and go from the USB-C type connection to this one um, and it will work. Um, in my experience, that is true. Um, the only thing that I've had is that sometimes if my OPZ battery is low, um, it's not powered the um, NTEC box correctly and it's just been a little bit um, fiddly or kind of stopped working. And so as a general rule of thumb, I would say always use the Nucleum before the, the uh, NTEC box box, even if th though it's the Mark one, I just found that I was having some problems that were com immediately eliminated when I started using a powered USB hub. And it's just something to consider that either one that you go for, for maximum stability, I would always recommend using a USB powered hub. Um, I just found that, you know, like there were instances where it hadn't worked perfectly for me. So just bear that in mind that you'll probably need uh, the Kingston Nucleum regardless of which one you go for. And so you might decide that the, the Mark II's got a few extra features that you might find useful in the future. So now the OPZ is all hooked up and everything's all connected and everything's working and we're receiving the DMX signal fine. I'll kind of show you some basic operations that you can do um, with the OPZ to control the lights. So you use the chromatic keys to essentially change what the lights are doing. So um, the black keys kind of do sort of like a, almost like a master control and then the bottom seem to do sort of movements between those. For example, um, when it's zero, the lights are kind of always off unless you kind of do something with the, the bottom keys. And then if I were to do one, uh, the light is like always on um, until I do something else. So there are different ones here. So two, for example, is gonna be like a strobing kind of thing where it kind of goes all the way down and then it kind of goes back up. Um, the pixel tubes are really good to kind of illustrate the movement that the different lights have, but you can actually still view all the different movements within the um, the OPZ app. It does give you a good uh, indication. So three is kind of like, you know, slightly shorter. Four, slightly shorter again. And you kind of get the idea that you've got different ways of kind of hooking these lights up. Um, now I'll go through what the, the four um, controls do at the top. So um, basically color one, color two, how fast the movements are going and how bright the lights are going. So change the color here, like that. Uh, secondary color um, is accessed by, you can quickly access it with this button here. So you can see I've got color one, color two. I could change that. So that could be like a pink color one, color two. Uh, how fast are we moving? So I'll kind of put this to that one. So you can kind of see, you know, changes the speed of the movement. So I can speed that up even further or slow it down. And then I've got a brightness control as well. So making the, the lights not as bright or brighter. Um, so the cool thing about the OPZ is that everything is step sequenceable in the same way that any of the audio tracks are. So for example, I'm just gonna give myself a four to the floor on the kick track, just so that you kind of actually have like a, you know, a frame of reference for tempo. So I'll just 
pop a four to the floor in really quickly. So now we have sort of like something that's going to denote tempo. And what I can do, I can then go into the lights and I'll set it to zero and I know this one is the flash. And all I'm going to do is just press this down in time. And you can see that's picked that up. So I could then change it to a secondary color every second one. And now we've got these lights changing color. So I hope this kind of illustrates kind of the things that you can do, um, the different ways that you can have the sort of lights set up. Um, the OPZ is quite useful and quite powerful. The thing that I really like about it is that you can set um, all of these are saved per pattern. So in the same way that all the sequence data is saved per pattern, so is the lights. What makes this really useful is, uh, you know, like if you've written a song and you want to have like a dedicated light show and you've used the different patterns of the OPZ to go from section to section, it becomes very easy to kind of have different sections, um, you know, like different lights uh, for different sections of the song, which is really, really useful um, for kind of, you know, changing it up, maybe taking the lights out just before a chorus or something like that. So, you know, you kind of have quite a lot of control um, with the lights, which is really, really useful. So um, I'll kind of now show you just like a very really brief example of just kind of what you can do. And I'll uh, close my curtain so you can kind of see what the lights really look like. So hopefully this has been really useful for you. In a lot of ways, um, it's quite plug and play. It's quite easy to set up. Um, it looks a little bit more daunting than it is. Um, the hardest part for me has been getting a setup that consistently works and works well, um, for which I have to recommend the uh, Nucleum USB hub and either the Mark II or the Mark I. The Entech boxes seem to be perfectly stable. I never really have any problems with them. It's generally just kind of my recommendation to use the stuff that Teenage Engineering recommend and have tested. Um, you feel free to use other stuff, but I I've had a lot of problems when shows been completely derailed by incorrect USB hubs, all these kind of things. Um, so I would definitely recommend, if possible, stick into the setup of the NTech boxes and the USB hub shown here. Um, but yeah, um, thanks for watching and I hope it's been helpful.